This is Echo, and she is a very cute little dog, and I think uh, like a lot of cute little dogs, that's part of the problem, is I think her cuteness was had kind of gotten in the way of her guardians providing her with structure. Now, they moved in a couple different places, and each place she's had a little bit less structure, and I think that this place, we finally reached a tipping point. Um, and there's some problems that we had in a couple of different areas, but she's really responded well to the stuff that we went over, especially the hissing for the escalating consequences. So uh, it's a good place to start for her roadmap to success. So I want the guardian to start using the escalating consequences to disagree with her. Remember the hiss we want to use before the dog does the wrong thing. Uh, it's almost the warning. And then we're going to use a standing up, uh, the marching towards her and the leash timeout. If you want a more detailed explanation of the escalating consequences, you can go to doggoneproblems.com, click on the dog training tips page. I believe there's a search box that will be right here. Uh, next to the video and you can go ahead and just type in escalating consequences of a number of write-ups where there's videos where I talk about that specifically. Okay, I'd like the guardians to start incorporating some rules for her. One of the rules I suggested was no furniture. Now we're doing this for video purposes, but for dogs, the higher they sit, the more rank or status they have. So we want her to stay off the furniture for a minimum of 30 days or as long as the problem is still going on. At that point, furniture with permission and with an invitation and only for good behavior. So if she's on the couch and she growls at the other dog or barks at a guest, she has to immediately get down. And we're not gonna allow her to sit on the back of the couch up here because that has more authority than the humans and that confuses her. Um, all right, we'd also like to uh, counter condition her with the desensitization technique that I showed in the other video where we're gonna do either knocking or the doorbell. And if there's other things that she reacts to, we can use it for the blender and the fire alarm and all the rest of that stuff as well. Um, she is, uh, has a tendency to get car sick and she has motion sickness. So I went through a, uh, a technique for the guardians to get her uh, comfortable with the car. The first step is actually just getting her to the car without her being worked up. And as they're walking her to the car, she starts shutting down to try to prevent it from happening. So the first thing we want to do is break that down activity down in individual steps. So we might walk her to the car without actually having any intention of even opening the car door. Now we get to the point where she starts resisting, we're going to have the high value tricky trainers that I like to use and we're going to split them in half and let her sniff one and then put it an inch in front of her. We're not going to have her be holding her obviously at that pace. Uh, she'll be on the leash. And then just try to toss it like an inch or two in front of her when she goes through that one. When she gets to the point where she's really resisting, you're close to her breaking point, the next time you get a good one, then go ahead and come back in the house. So she actually is just approaching the car, getting high value treats and as soon as we stop going towards the car, the treats go away. So now we're creating a positive association with the action of moving towards the car. Eventually the guardians will get her all the way to the car. Then we want to open the car door and put one just right in the door jam. So all she has to do is lick, go up and lick it. She doesn't even have to get up on her hind legs. Well, she might have to get on her hind legs. <laughs> uh, but then eventually we want her to stick her head in a little bit further and further. And then maybe put one paw up and then two paws up and then get up and then get down right away. Once we get her into the car where she's not hesitating and she's pretty casual about it, then the next step, you're, you're really hanging your head. Mm -hmm. uh, the next step would be to actually start the car and we wouldn't actually go anywhere. At that point, we might use the counter conditioning technique, start the car and just let her chew on a treat or two. Then we stop the car and we get out and go back home. And then eventually we're gonna get to the point where we start the car and we're driving. Now when we're doing the drive, we want, we want to drive like we're driving Miss Daisy. We're gonna go very slow, no hard acceleration, no hard braking, no big turns. Matter of fact, almost just letting the dog, the car idle and not letting it move forward in an idle. So it's a very gradual speed. As she gets more comfortable about it, we'll be able to do a little bit more movement, a little bit faster. Uh, and eventually we'll get to the point where it's a realistic car ride and she's no longer motion sick. Uh, but, um, and the guardian asked if she should put her in like a little kennel or something like that. I prefer to have the dog free when, especially have motion sickness, they have better stability if they're able to uh, stand up, right? That's yeah. better. I like that head up. Okay, I like the guardians to get into an uh, start making an emphasis of petting her with a purpose and stop petting her when she demands it or nudges or scratches. Um, by taking away the furniture, I think a lot of the way that she initiates contact and asks for it is by jumping on our lap. If we take away the furniture, that's going to eliminate that. Uh, but if she nudges or scratches at us and we pet her, we're, tell she, we're telling her she tell can tell us what to do. So instead, when she nudges or scratches or barks at us, we're going to tell her to sit. When she sits, we're going to pet her under the chin and say the word sit only. Not good sit, not her name, just the word sit. And we're going to pronounce it the same way, not sit. We're just going to say sit, right? That's right. Um, now, the more that we do that, uh, the more uh, it's, the easier it's going to be for her. Yes, I know, I know. Let's, let's be a little, there we go, a little bit more chill. So the more that we do this, the more she's going to learn. If I go and sit in front of humans, that's a better, more polite way of asking them to pet me. 
And after a while, she'll start doing that and sitting in front of you to prepay like I talked about off camera. Uh, now, I'd also like the guardians to start uh, uh, doing passive training. So if she comes to us on her own, we didn't ask her to, we're gonna pet her and say the word here, or excuse me, come in her situation. Every time she sits down next, next to us, we're gonna pet her and say sit. Every time she lays down, we're gonna pet her and say down. When we ask her to get off the couch, once she gets off the couch, we're gonna pet her and say off, or whatever the word is that we wanna use. So we wanna reward her for what we call desired actions and behaviors. And the more that we do that, the more inclined that she is gonna to be to engage in those behaviors on her own, as well as when we ask her to do them. Um, and this is a great way to get your dog to have a very strong recall is to just pet her and say, he, come every time she comes to you on her own. Um, now, in the studio, she likes, uh, she really likes interacting with, uh, with our uh, studio guests and uh, she also likes to lick the floor. So uh, I would make sure that the guests are not petting her and the humans, uh, her guardians are not petting her when she's in an excited state, when they come home or if she's excited for something, just ignore her, get up and walk away or just act like she's not there, wait for her to settle down. When she's settled, then we can reach over and start petting her again. Um, now, if she starts licking the carpet in the, in the studio, I would hiss at her once the second she starts. If we can, again, recreate that situation, have a guest come over, play the part as a, of a musician as soon, so you can pay attention to her rather than the mixing console. As soon as she hit, starts, hiss once. She responds so well to the hiss, I'm guessing you're only gonna have to do it a couple times, she'll still stop. If, by chance, I'm wrong and she continues, well then what we're gonna do is we're gonna escort her out the room by using that third consequence, marching towards her until we get to the door and closing the door. We have to do that bang, bang. As soon as she starts to lick, hiss. As soon as she does it, licks a second time, you're out of here. And if her timing is consistent, dogs learn through repetition, uh, consistency, and good timing. If your timing is consistent after a while, she'll be like, as soon as I lick the floor, I'm out of here and I like listening to the music, so I'm gonna stay in here. Um, let me see, the gar other rules that we talked about were not being allowed to be on the carpet around the couch when anybody's snacking or not being allowed to, on the area rug around the dinner table when we're eating dinner. You can also make a rule that maybe she's not allowed to be between the work island and uh, the counter in the kitchen when we're preparing food. The rest of the time she can be there. I'd like to see her eating uh, a little bit more of a structured way. Um, and we have a new dog that's in the house. It's a senior dog or an older dog. So I would give that each dog a unique command word and uh, just say the word when they take their first bite. Um, and while the other dog's eating, she's not allowed to be within seven feet. When the other dog's eating, she's not allowed to be within seven feet. So there's a seven foot buffer from humans when they're eating as well as the dogs when they're eating. The dogs each have three minutes to eat maximum. As soon as they walk away from the bowl, we pick it up and we dump it and then they don't eat again until the next meal. Um, I like the guardians to practice having her sit and stay at the bottom or top of the stairs for both flights of stairs so that we have a unique command. So I would have a command to go from the first floor to the second floor and from the second floor down to the first floor and the floor uh, command a separate one to go from the, well, I guess you could say an up to go up the stairs and a down to go down the stairs. I would come up with a word a little bit more unique than up or down though. Yes, I know you're a little bit hot. Um, let me see, what else? Um, the dog bed, we wanna practice the dog bed exercises I showed you, and again, come up with a unique name for each dog bed. Um, when we're out walking, make sure that we go through the door first, the dog uh, behind, is behind us. Um, because she likes to pull a little bit, we're gonna use the martingale with a special twist of the leash. We just got done doing that. Uh, if you have questions about that, you can message me directly if you forget how to attach the leash. Um, is there anything else I forgot? I think that was it. I think that's pretty, oh, the door exercise. We wanna make sure we practice the door. That's the main thing oh, yeah. they wanted to work on. So we wanna make sure that we're coming, uh, when either one of us are coming, uh, the guardians are coming, we're calling or texting each other. This is really important for the first week or so. So every time you go run an errand, don't use the, your keys, don't, uh, and just text the other person, hey, I'll be there in three minutes, door exercise. And then you prepare yourself, you wipe your hands down, go back to doing, making it look like you're doing something else, but get everything prepared so you're not rushing and flustered. And uh, if you forget how to do the door exercise, you can go to doggoneproblems.com, type in door exercise right up here, and I have a bunch of videos that will show you how to do it, right? That's right. All right, well, this is uh, Echo's Roadmap to Success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog, only sometimes you mean it.